gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode 83 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is June 30, 2020, our 105th day under COVID-19 restrictions. Well, let's begin as we always do with our national days. There's quite a few today. It is social media day. I guess that's what you're using to watch this, I would suppose. National OOTD day, outfit of the day. This is the day we are given the opportunity to share our favorite style with the entire world. Maybe Saturday's style was a little better. It is National Meteor Day for reasons that will become obvious in just a bit. National Organization for Women Day. Another item that will become obvious uh, in a little while while we're celebrating that this day. National Celebrate Your Marriage Day. Okay? And the Great American Picnic Day. Well... If you're picnicking, do it safely and uh, watch out for Karens. They get, in they get you in trouble. Uh, let's go with our San Francisco story for today. And as always, we rely on John Ralston's wonderful tome, This Date in San Francisco, because it was on this day in 1854 that the oldest tidal gauge station in the Western Hemisphere begins operating in the Presidio. In 1807, President Thomas Jefferson, who encouraged scientific understanding, established a, the Federal Bureau of Survey of the Coast, which after several reorganizations, continues today as the National Geodetic Survey, the oldest physical science agency in the United States. Until the mid-19th century, the survey's activities were confined to the Atlantic coast. In 1849, U.S. Pacific Coast surveyors found that the coastal charts at the time were often badly inaccurate. Poor understanding of the tides in the San Francisco Bay led to multiple shipwrecks outside the Golden Gate, sometimes in the bay itself. The first tidal observations were made at Rincon Point near what is now filled land at the foot of Folsom Street. On June 30th, 1854, a permanent station in what are now the restored tidelands of Chrissy Field recorded the first data. It has been there ever since, enjoying the distinction of being the oldest continually operating one in the Western Hemisphere. Other stations in the United States have been disrupted by storms or human error. The only older such station in the world is in Brest, France. The station in a small white building with a red roof hasn't even a sign, which recordings were significant from the start. On Christmas Eve 1854, Army Lieutenant William Trowbridge saw squiggles on the tidal meters, which he attributed to an earthquake at sea. Months later, it was learned that an earthquake shook Shimoda, Japan on December 23rd, 19th. 19th century coast surveyor Alexander Bosch used the station's data to estimate the average depth of the Pacific Ocean. Vessel owners today use Christy Field tide tables even in the internet age. I had no idea about that one. Let's get into our other stories for today. 1894, on this date, the London's Tower Bridge opened. 1908, a giant fireball, most likely caused by the airburst of a large meteorite or comet, flattens 80 million trees near the stony Tunguska River in Yenishek, Governor, Russia. That was a mouthful. In the largest impact event re in recorded history. So I believe, at least. That's why it's National Meteor Day. There may be other reasons, I'm not sure. Uh, 1914, Mahatma Gandhi's first arrest after campaigning for Indian rights in South Africa. 1918, prominent U.S. socialist and pacifist Eugene Debs is arrested on charges of denouncing the government, a violation of the Espionage Act of 1917. 
1934 was the Night of the Long Knives. Adolf Hitler staged this is a bloody purge of the Nazi party. 1936, Margaret Mitchell's novel Gone with the Wind is published. 1938, Superman first appears in DC Comics Action Comics series issue number one. Happy birthday, Superman, although he probably has a different birthday on Krypton. I don't know how, where they, when they celebrated it here. Um, I guess that's something that's the Clarks. So I don't know. Mm, okay, well, 1940, Brenda Starr Reporter premieres, the first comic strip by a woman, Dale Dahlia Messick. It was a supplement in Chicago's Sunday Tribune. 1953, the first Chevrolet Corvette is manufactured. 1974, Soviet dancer Mikhail Brizhnikov defects to the West. 1982, Federal Equal Rights Amendment fails three states short of ratification. So that's probably why it's National Organization for Women Day, I believe. 1986, the Georgia sodomy law was upheld by the Supreme Court in a 5-4 decision, but all sodomy laws were erased in the United States in 2003 with the Supreme Court decision, Lawrence v. Texas. Our births today, 1917, singer, actor, Lita Horn, Lena, woo, Lena Horn. 1917, actor, Susan Hayward, they were born on the same day. 1934, magician Harry Blackstone Jr. 1951, bassist extraordinaire Stanley Clark. 1966, fighter Mike Tyson. 1979, Hasidic Jewish reggae singer Matis Yahu. What's become of him? I haven't heard of him in years. And 1985, multiple gold medal Olympic award winner Michael Phelps. Deaths. 1974, Alberta King, the mother of Martin Luther King Jr., is assassinated in church. 1983, Mary Livingston, uh, you remember her from the uh, Jack Benny show, is actually Jack Benny's wife. 1985, James Dewar, never heard of him, right? You probably have if you've eaten a Twinkie. He invented them. 1993, George McFarland, American actor, uh, Spanky McFarland, the R Gang Little Rascals series passed away. 2001, American guitarist Chet Atkins. 2003, Buddy Hackett, funny, funny man. 2014, American director and screenwriter Paul Mazursky. 2015, Leonard Starr, uh, the creator of the comic strip Little Orphan Annie. Well, that wraps it up for today. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, stay healthy. If you do go outside, wear a mask. You know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of deaths could be prevented if people simply wore masks. It's not a government plot. Nobody's trying to take away your rights. It's for public health. We are in the middle of a massive emergency, people. Don't be babies. I'm very, very fed up with this, in case you can't tell. Uh, be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.